What you're seeing here is an optical illusion, but it's not the kind that tricks your brain into seeing something that isn't there. This literally prevents your eyes from seeing something that is there. The mask on the table here is coated with a bizarre compound called Vantablack, which is known as one of the darkest materials on the planet. Remarkable as Vantablack is, it's actually a happy accident. The researchers who created it were working with a material that holds much broader promises. It's a material that was supposed to change the world a few times over. Looks like a simple black powder, but it may as well be gold. That hasn't quite happened yet, but the researchers did create a sensation that no one saw coming, and a substance that's pretty hard to see at all. Vantablack is developed by a company based in the UK called Surrey Nanosystems. Ben Jensen is the company's founder. My role at Surrey Nanosystems is to lead the science and development of our super black coatings. Those are coatings that range with reflectances from 1% down to almost unmeasurable. Here's what that means. At a very basic level, we see an object because light reflects off of it and hits our eyes. The more light that is absorbed rather than reflected back at us, the darker the object. Vanta Black works by coating an object in a mess of microscopic structures. One variant is laid out like a thicket of aligned hairs, while another is arranged more like a coral. In either case, the structures act like a maze for incoming photons. Photons can get into and be trapped and absorbed. So that means when you look at it, so little light comes back to your eyes that you see absolutely nothing. It's just a black surface, even when it's coated onto a three-dimensional structure. Now, Ben didn't set out to enter the Guinness Book of World Records for black paint. As far back as 2007, he'd been chasing a very particular white whale of material science carbon nanotubes, and he wasn't the only one. Ah, this was a very exciting time indeed. It was new, and the expectations were very high. Boris Jakobsen is a professor at Rice University who's been working on carbon nanotubes since 1995, just a few years after their discovery. Nanotubes are as small as they sound, carbon cylinders with walls as thin as one atom. If you unfurled a nanotube, you'd get another extremely promising and hyped material, graphene. And like graphene, they come with an exciting list of theoretical uses, as a semiconductor that outperforms silicon, or as a building material with unparalleled lightness and tensile strength. Bridges, whatever, I mean, it's not realized yet, but flying vehicles, spaceship. Or in extreme imaginings, elevators to space. We have this article written long ago. This is space elevator image. This is a cover of a magazine. Like graphene, though, the promise of carbon nanotubes hasn't always meshed with the realities of research and development. Producing them is actually pretty doable, but getting perfectly formed nanotubes at high volume is another story. You can do it. You can produce many tons of nanotubes, but they may be in bad quality or not processable, which is difficult to convert into something useful, because you cannot bring to people one nanotube and say, enjoy. <laughs> Carbon nanotubes have found their way into some industries. They fortify sports equipment like tennis rackets and help to shield spacecraft. Nanotubes are also showing up in transistors and lithium ion batteries. That's actually where Ben began his work, trying to integrate nanotubes into semiconductor technology. But the equipment they built to grow the nanotubes proved useful for something else entirely. It was really serendipity. It's kind of like, you know, we grew these materials in partnership with the National Physical Laboratory as a test to make something with a reflectance of about 1%. And then all of a sudden they came back to us and said, this is almost unmeasurably black. And that's when we knew we'd really nailed it. The trick is that carbon nanotubes are great for building those complex microscopic structures, the nanoforests and coral reefs that trap photons so effectively. They weren't the first. NASA has been chasing ultra black materials for some time. But Vanta Black can be applied to materials at much lower temperatures than previous efforts. Some can be sprayed on at room temperature, which opens up a much wider variety of applications. But what are the applications? For starters, it's useful whenever you're dealing with more light than you want. And that actually happens a lot in space. So for example, in space, everybody thinks it's really kind of dark up there, but actually it's incredibly bright. And you look at an astronaut doing a spacewalk, almost glowing white. That's because the sun is not being absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere, and it's brilliantly bright up there. So one of the main applications is absorbing the stray light from the sun, the moon, and the Earth, so telescopes and camera systems can see the stars in much better detail. Here on Earth, Vantablack can be used in other lenses to help camera operators capture bright light sources without washing the image out. 
But if they're taking a tracking shot across the sun or shooting into the sun, then you get something called ghosting within the lens system. And we use Vantablack in commercial lens systems to eliminate that ghosting artifact that you get. And then there are the less technical uses. Vantablack has been used to promote a video game inside an all-black room and to boost contrast on a $95,000 watch face. There's also artist Anish Kapoor, who painted a large hole with Vantablack for an art installation, which someone promptly fell into. Vantablack has become so popular that the company developed a new formulation, VBX, that doesn't use carbon nanotubes at all. Nanotubes themselves may be damaging to your lungs if you inhale them, so VBX is a safer alternative. But it's notable that carbon nanotubes launched a whole new business that's now leaving them behind. I think it's amazing watching people's reactions every time. It doesn't matter how often they see it, people will just go, I gotta look at it again. It's hard to communicate the unique strangeness of Vanta Black with video. On a screen, you just kind of see a cutout of where the object should be. But so much of Vanta Black's popularity clearly comes down to the effect that it has on people. Our producer Sophie was on the shoot at Surrey Nanosystems in the UK, and we asked her what it looked like in person. I thought I was like, I did a lot of research before uh, I went, so I knew what I was getting it myself into. Um, and then you see it, and and you know what you're you're gonna see, and it still messes with you.